Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about enzyme kinetics, Michaelis Minton, and Line Weaver Burke. We talked about the Vmax, the KM, etc. Today, we'll talk about the effects of the external environment on the enzyme activity, aka enzyme velocity, also known as enzyme rate, temperature, pH, and salinity. How do they affect your enzyme activity? Today we'll find out. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Let's review Michaelis Menten. You look at the graph, what's on the y-axis? Vmax, which is the maximum reaction velocity of the enzyme. What's here? The concentration of the substrate which is going to bind to the enzyme. If I cause induction or upregulation or I increase number of enzyme molecules, all of this will raise the Vmax which will shift my curve upwards. Conversely, if I cause repression or downregulation or non-competitive inhibition or I decrease the number of enzymes, what's going to happen to the Vmax? It will decrease shifting the curve downwards. Moreover, if I cause activation or potentiation or sensitization, I'll increase the affinity between the substrate and the enzyme. They will love each other more. They will hug each other stronger. And when the affinity goes up, KM goes down. And KM is just like the S. As KM goes down, i.e. shifts to the left, S is decreasing as you see on the graph. Conversely, if I cause inactivation, competitive inhibition, desensitization, all of this will lower the affinity, raise the KM, and will shift the curve to the right. All of this was Michaelis Menten. If you want more detailed explanation, please refer to previous videos. Next, Lean Weaver Burke. What's this point here on the y-axis? 1 over Vmax. And what's that point here on the x-axis? It is negative 1 over Km. If this lovely point is shifted upwards, it means that Vmax is decreasing, which could mean that the number of enzymes are decreasing. Why is that? Repression, downregulation, or non-competitive inhibition. However, if this point is going downwards, Vmax is going upwards, which means increased number of enzymes due to induction or upregulation. Next, the negative of the negative is positive. You added a negative, but then you flip the ratio, which means as if you did nothing. So look at this as if it's pure Km. If you shift me to the left, it means Km is going downwards. If you shift me to the right, it means Km is going upwards. And still, Km is always the opposite of affinity. Pause and review. Enzymes are catalysts. They do increase the rate of the reaction. They decrease the activation energy. However, they do not change. They are not consumed. They do not change the equilibrium equilibrium position, they do not change the thermodynamics, they do not change the overall delta G. Here is my wonderful enzyme. This is called the active site. The one behind it, the back door, is the allosteric site. Front door, active site. Back door, allosteric site. What does the word allo mean? It means different. The opposite of iso. Before the reaction, here is the substrate, here is the enzyme. They will hug each other, boom! And after the reaction, you have the products. And the enzyme is neither changed nor consumed. When the substrate and the enzyme hug each other, they hug each other like a key in a lock. But it's a good theory, however not so accurate. A better theory is the induced fit model theory. It's just like your hand grabbing a soft squishy ball. Your hand is causing an indentation on the ball and the ball is changing the features of your hand. You are changing the ball and the ball is changing you. Both of you are changing, conformationally speaking, so that you become more complementary to one another. All of this was revealing what we discussed before. Today, we'll talk about the effect of temperature, pH, and salinity on your enzyme activity. Number one, temperature. For beginners, please recognize these as synonyms. Enzyme velocity is the same as enzyme rate, is the same as enzyme activity. Later on, when you're doing PhD in biochemistry, it's a different story. So what's the effect of temperature on enzyme activity? They are directly related, which means if I raise the temperature, enzyme activity or velocity should go up. Ad infinitum? No, within limits. If you raise the temperature too much, boom, boom, boom. The law of diminishing marginal return will nip you in the bud and kick you in the butt. 
Because if you raise the temperature too much, you will cause denaturation, breakdown of proteins. And as you know, enzymes are proteins. As you break down your enzymes and you destroy them, of course, you will lower the enzyme velocity or enzyme activity. So in the beginning, temperature and enzyme activity are directly related. But at the end, they are inversely related. When they were directly related, as I raised my temperature, the enzyme velocity went up. With every rise in temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, I expect my enzyme velocity to double. Will this happen forever? No. It will eventually taper off and then start coming down. Just like the stock market. Boom and bust. This bust is denaturation of the enzyme. And that's why your body cannot survive extreme cold temperatures because you will die from lack of enzyme activity. Your body cannot survive extreme hot climates either because I will denature your proteins. And that's why fever can be very dangerous, especially if it's exceed 42 degrees Celsius. Now we're dying. Okay, Medicosis, I see that there is like a sweet spot here in the middle. What's that? 37 degrees Celsius, which is your core body temperature. Now, onto applied biochemistry. There is an enzyme known as tyrosinase. It gives you a pigment, usually a dark pigment. Some people are born without tyrosinase, i.e. no pigment. That's why the disease is known as albinism. They get very light or pale color of their skin. Another story, the Siamese cats. They have mutated tyrosinase. It's a weird kind of tyrosinase. At warm temperature, like the core body temperature of the cat, this enzyme is ineffective, i.e. no pigment. That's why they have a white color near their core of the body. But look at that, the same mutated tyrosinase at cold temperature, like the extremities, their feet, the tip of the nose, some of the face, the ears. Cold temperature, tyrosinase becomes effective, i.e. active, i.e. dark pigment. That's why they are dark in these areas. Let's take it to the clinic. The disease known as albinism is a deficiency of tyrosinase enzyme which means I cannot make melanin from DOPA. As you know, melanin, may he rest in peace, was responsible for your skin color. Without melanin, there is no skin pigment. That's why I become pale, called albinism. We are done with temperature. Now let's talk about the pH, the power of hydrogen, the potentia hydrogena. As you know, pH is inversely related to the hydrogen ion concentration. The more hydrogen ion concentration I have, the lower the pH. So if I am in an environment that is super duper acidic, H will go up, but pH will go down. Conversely, if I am in a basic environment, H will go down, pH will go up. What's the normal pH in your arterial blood? 7.4. That's your sweet spot for the pH. Below that, your enzymes might not work as well. Over that, your enzymes might not work as well either. Most of your body enzymes work here at 7.4 pH, with one famous exception. Pepsin, secreted from the stomach. It works in a very acidic medium, like the stomach, because the stomach is already acidic, and the pH is very low, only 2, which means that the hydrogen ion concentration is very high. As you know, it's an exponential relationship. Your stomach is very acidic. We're done with temperature, we're done with pH. Let's talk about salinity, i.e. salt solution. If you become a doctor or a nurse, you will hear of saline solutions lots of times in the hospital. Saline means sodium chloride solution. Nothing more, nothing less. If I exist in a very salty medium, this might increase enzyme denaturation and kill my enzyme activities. And that's why your serum osmolality is key. Normally, your serum osmolality is uh, 290 milliosmoles per liter or milliosmoles per kilogram. No one cares. What if I went from 290 to 490, for example? You'll die. So let's recap. Today we talked about the effect of temperature on the enzyme activity. The higher the temperature, the greater the activity within limits. After this, you go downhill. As Dr. Jordan Peterson might say, 
you descend into chaos, so to speak, you know? Similarly with the pH, low pH is not good for the enzyme. High pH is not good for the enzyme. You want it to be at the sweet spot. The sweet spot for pH is 7.4. The sweet spot for temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. More salty I become, it increases risk of enzyme denaturation, which decreases enzyme activity. In the next video, we'll talk about feed back and feed forwards. Then we'll talk about competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. If you like this video, you will enjoy my toxicology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a general pharmacology course about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and even more graphs. Moreover, there is a surgery high yields course that you can download at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.